There's no one here that cannot close his or her eyes. And if your daughter is in New York City, she's right in front of you and you're embracing her, you feel the touch of her hands and her hair. It's simple heart sense. He's shaking hands with this judge in his imagination. He feels the touch of the hand. He hears the voice, congratulations, and all the things going with it. He flashed the movie in his mind, knowing that all the power of God would flow through that image in his mind. Thought of freedom, thought upon thought, the thought of freedom, a picture of freedom, the image of freedom, and the mood of freedom. Thought upon thought, image upon image, mood upon mood, passes from thought and picture to function and fact. His thought of freedom, his image of freedom, gradually sinks into his subconscious mind. It has to, by repetition. And then the subconscious is compulsive. He's compelled to freedom. Yeah. In other words, you can overcome any destructive habit in the world by that simple law. Utterly simple, beyond words. Uh, <clears throat> that is, your Bible tells you, keep your lights burning and your loins girded. The wedding feast is your mental and emotional union with your freedom and peace of mind. The return of the Lord is the response of my subconscious mind to my conscious thinking and imagery. Yes, and now keep your lights burning in the Bible means uh, that you sense, perception, be keen, learn to know the laws of life. Be on the beam, you know, be aware of the truth. And your loins girded, meaning know the creative law of the mind. Then the Lord of the law will always respond. There is no use saying, I'm God's perfect child, or I'm whole and perfect now. If you believe that there's a germ or a, a cancer or something out there that can uh, kill you or can destroy you. You must, there must be no verbalisms. In prayer, you give no power to any external thing, germ or the atmosphere or stars or jinx or anything in the world. The minute you do, you cease to be a scientific thinker. You're double-minded, unstable in all your ways. Uh, you don't give power to any created thing, anything in the phenomenalistic world. Uh, germs or anything in this world, you don't get power to. You get power to the Creator. When a man gets cancer, fear seizes him. When he says, I'm finished, I'm done for, he's through. It's, uh, it's only a manifestation of fear. All he has to do is change his mind and he changes his body. Fear is man's greatest curse. Quimby in 1847, he said, I take a man from the street. He never heard of the word cancer. And he has a little lump, maybe he fell down. I say to him, you've got cancer. It has no effect upon me, he never heard of the word. He said, if we didn't have so many names, we wouldn't have so many diseases. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the doctor went into uh, um, Mrs. Moriarty's home and uh, he examined her husband he said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Moriarty, your husband is dead. Immediately he got up and then he said, indeed, that I'm not dead. And she said, shut up, the doctor knows best. Sister of mine uh, was a nun in uh, Lois Stop, Suffolk, England. Yeah. Uh, she's now in the next dimension. Very it's religious. Woman. Very religious. She was conducting a pilgrimage to Lourdes. I have seen people heal at uh, Buddhistic shrines. They offer oranges and money to a statue. In talking to them, they have had remarkable, miraculous healings. The same has happened in Buddhistic shrines. They never heard of Jesus or Mary or Joseph or Buddha or any. They're healed by their expectancy and their belief. Their imagination is fired. Their yeah. imagination is fired. They're full of expectancy. They have blocked belief. And the subconscious heals them. Their own subconscious is the only healer in the world. Nobody heals you. The surgeon removes a block. Hammer. 
He well, said, me, so. well, he, the psychologist, uh, Freitag, will try and get rid of guilt in your mind. When he does, immediately the healing power is released. Chiropractor tries to manipulate your neck to let the healing power flow through you. No one in all the world heal. The healing power of God is within you. He may use a different technique, a modus operandi. And they're, they're all tapping the one healing power. No one heals by a different method than you do. For there is one method, according to your faith, is it done unto you? The one faith or scientific faith? Now, uh, she told me this man in Lowestoff was blind from birth. Congenital blindness. And he said, Sister, uh, can I go, I'm a Protestant, can I go to, uh, the, with you to the pilgrimage to Lourdes? She said, hey, anybody can come who wants to. Uh, <clears throat> when he reached Lourdes, they put him in this bath. People with all manner of sores, separating wounds, go into that bath. The fellow got a sponge, began to wash his eyes and his whole body. His vision came back. He saw clearly the rest of his life. What was that? Blind faith. He went there. He was 75% healed before he went there. He went there with expectancy. He heard about some miraculous healings in his own town. His imagination was completely fired. Enthusiastic, you know. He was impregnating his mind all the way to the to Lourdes. Then when he, the minute he reached the water, he impregnated his subconscious mind. He said, all I know, he said, I was blind and now I see.